Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to talk to you about Charlotte Mason's method of teaching language arts. This is how I have taught all my boys language arts. Except for my first, there was about six months in the beginning in first grade where I used a popular all-in-one language arts curriculum that just didn't work for our family. His ability to spell was a lot lower in development than his ability to read and it just was not actually developmentally appropriate. So I decided to try out Charlotte Mason's method of language arts because it is much more developmentally appropriate and truly based more on science than on tradition. So how does Charlotte Mason how did Charlotte Mason teach language arts? First, she started out very young teaching children um, the sounds in words. So she started out with auditory recognition of the individual sounds that make up words. So very simple things like asking a child to um, tell her the words or the sounds that make up like map, m, app. So you want that auditory and speaking before kids even start to look at letters on paper. Remember, those are just the symbols of the sounds of the words and words are just symbols for ideas and things so you want children to have a good foundation in ideas and things and what those mean and that only comes from experience and living in the world and then they start to hear those individual sounds in words before they start to learn the symbols on paper so even though Charlotte Mason starts reading lessons before the child is six or in first grade, she just does very gentle child-led reading lessons. And it's mainly just learning how um, words are made up of individual sounds and then learning what those sounds look like on paper. Um, but this is again, child-led and it's not anything that they're being forced to do. But by six or seven years old, which is in form one, she starts formal reading lessons. And this is made up of two things. One she calls spelling lessons, and the other she calls reading lessons. And you do those every other day. So when I was teaching my boys to read, I did spelling lessons three times a week, and then uh, reading lessons two days a week. And spelling lessons is pretty much phonics. They are learning the individual sounds of words, they're learning the patterns of the English language, and then in reading lessons, they're learning how to put those words together to make meaning, to make sentences, and sentences make up paragraphs and ideas. And so I'm gonna make a separate video on our spelling lessons and our reading lessons in the future. But for now, I'll just tell you a little bit about the phonics program or spelling program that I chose to use with my boys after doing a ton of research into it. Um, and again, there are so many good re, uh, spelling and phonics programs out there. There's not the one you have to use, but the one that has worked so well with all of my boys is it's called Words Their Way. Um, it is based on spelling patterns. It's also, there's been a ton of research on it as far as it's developmentally appropriate. What kinds of spelling um, abilities do children gain at different ages or I guess develop at different ages? And so I really like that it's based on development and a ton of research and my boys all really enjoy it. It puts them in an active role and they are looking at words and finding patterns and grouping them based on those patterns, based on the, how they sound and how they look. So for language arts in form one, children are doing reading and spelling lessons every other day. They're also doing handwriting and copy work. I just have my boys do a handwriting program until they know how to form their letters very well, both, both capitals and lowercase, and then they start copy work. Copy work is simply copying down a sentence from a book. It needs to be a well-written sentence that has correct spelling, punctuation, and grammar. So I write it down on one side and then they copy it down on the other. I like to point, or ask them to point out punctuation, like can you point out where the commas are, the period, the capitals, 
the capital letters. Can you point out some letters that are some words that might be hard for you to spell? All right, now I want you to look at those, memorize them in your mind, and then see if you can copy it down on the other side without looking, but always look at the word if you aren't sure how it's spelled. It's important for them to copy it down correctly because every time they write down the word incorrectly, it's cementing that in their mind and it's gonna confuse them later on when they're trying to write it down correctly. So that is copy work. And they do that from six to nine years old. At 10, they'll start form two. And from 10 to 12, year old, 10 to 12 years old, which is form two, they are going to do dictation instead of copy work. Dictation is pretty much the same as copy work, except they're not looking at the sentence as they write it down. They look at the sentence in the book, and then they look at spelling that might be hard. They memorize that in their mind, the, the words that might be hard for them. They look at where the punctuation is and the capitalization. Then I read it to him, my son, as he copies it down. If he starts to spell a word incorrectly, I stop him and make sure that he looks at the word so that he is writing it down correctly. When we are all done, I have him look at it and compare what he wrote down to the original passage to make sure that he put the capitals in the right places as well as the punctuation. He also starts grammar lessons. I there are so many good grammar programs out there. There is Fix It Grammar. There is, I believe it's called Grammar Island. There is the grammar program that Charlotte Mason made, which is what I use. It is available for free online from Charlotte Mason Poetry, but a delectable education made a, I guess a remake of it, um, or revised it and updated it would be a better way of saying that. And I love this program a lot. And my son actually enjoys grammar. There's no sentence diagramming. There's none of this um, stuff that kids just loathe grammar. It's not abstract. It's very practical. So my son reads about it or I can read it to him. Um, he's reading well enough that he reads it on his own. Then he comes and narrates to me what he learned and then he does the exercises which is just learning how to make sentences with the knowledge that you've gained. So that starts at 10 years old. Now they also start written narrations. And this is something I should have mentioned in the beginning. Oral narrations is the foundation of writing for Charlotte Mason education, and it begins at age six. So this is simply telling back what you learned. So the child, after you're done reading or after you do a math lesson, every lesson, you ask them, tell me what you learned. You could also say something like, can you, if you were going to teach your younger brother, what would you do? How would you show them? What would you teach them? So that is the foundation for writing. And they've done that for three or four years already in form one. Then when they start form two, they start written narrations. So it's the same thing. They're just writing it down. Now you can do writing or typing. I have my son do both so that he gets good at typing because that is what we do in our modern world. Most of it is typing instead of handwritten. However, it's still important to me that he writes things down. So we do every other um, narration is written or typed. Then after this, then they start, um, like in middle school and high school, they start doing more advanced writing. So it's not just write whatever you learned about, it's going to be write a persuasive essay, write a research essay. And so that's gonna be in high school um, and maybe middle school, depending on your child. Now, I am using the writing program, The Writing Revolution. I interviewed one of the authors, Natalie Wexler, on my podcast, and she talks a lot about the program and why it is so effective. It's so simple, and I personally believe it's very much in line with Charlotte Mason's principles on writing, which is that writing is a tool to share what you have learned or to persuade. And so it needs to be in the context of what you are learning. You need to have a good foundation of knowledge before you can write about something. So writing isn't a separate subject on its own, which is what Charlotte Mason recommended. It is 
a tool that's used in the context of other subjects, and that is what the writing revolution does. It also starts at the very basic building block of writing, which is a sentence. And so you learn how, students learn how to write good sentences before they move on to paragraphs, and how to write a good paragraph before they move on to essays. So I will put all the links for these um, curriculum that I have mentioned in the description. And if you have any questions about how I teach language arts, please leave them in the comments below. And if you have, um, if you'd like to hear more about any of these things in a separate video, let me know as well and I will make one. And don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to hear more videos like these.